After 21 years in development, Dream Chaser's 26 rocket engines still can't solve its fundamental problem. While SpaceX delivers cargo routinely, this winged spacecraft remains grounded despite billions in funding. But here's what most people don't realize about why wings and precision engines aren't enough. Today, we're revealing the real engineering trap that's keeping Dream Chaser earthbound. Dream Chaser's 26 engine propulsion system represents the most sophisticated spacecraft maneuvering technology ever built for cargo delivery. Each engine can fire at three different thrust levels, high, medium, and low, creating what Sierra Space calls surgical precision for delicate operations around the International Space Station. Think of it like having 26 individual steering wheels on a Formula One car, each with three different sensitivity settings, all working together to thread a needle at 17,500 miles per hour. But here's what few people realize about this engineering marvel. Those 26 engines are actually trying to solve a problem that SpaceX's Dragon capsule doesn't even have. When you choose wings over a simple capsule design, you inherit a cascade of complexity that no amount of engines can fix. The propulsion chemistry alone reveals the scope of this challenge. While SpaceX's Dragon uses traditional hypergolic fuels, chemicals so toxic that ground crews need full hazmat suits just to approach the spacecraft, Dream Chaser runs on what seems like a revolutionary green propellant system, kerosene and hydrogen peroxide. Sounds environmentally friendly, right? Ground crews can literally walk up to Dream Chaser in regular clothes after landing. However, this seemingly brilliant choice created an unexpected engineering nightmare that's been plaguing the project for years. Hydrogen peroxide isn't just corrosive to most metals. It naturally decomposes into water and oxygen over time, essentially eating away at your spacecraft's fuel lines during extended missions. We're talking about a chemical reaction that could literally dissolve critical components while Dream Chaser sits docked to the ISS for months. Sierra Space's solution showcases both their engineering brilliance and the depth of their problem. They turn to zirconium, one of the few metals that both resists hydrogen peroxide corrosion and doesn't accelerate its decomposition through ionic reactions. But sourcing, machining, and certifying zirconium components for spaceflight? That's not a six-month engineering task. It's a multi-year material science project. And here's what's truly staggering about the specifications. Dream Chaser can theoretically carry 27,500 kilograms to low Earth orbit using ULA's Vulcan rocket. That's roughly equivalent to lifting 15 cars into space simultaneously. The 15-foot cargo module was specifically engineered to maximize Vulcan's lift capacity while maintaining the precise aerodynamic properties needed for runway landings. But theoretical capacity means nothing if you can't get the certification to fly. The timeline reality exposes the magnitude of this complexity trap. SpaceX's Dragon took just four to five years from NASA contract signature in 2006 to its first flight in 2010. Dream Chaser? We're looking at over two decades. The project started as a concept in 2004, merged with Sierra Nevada Corporation in 2008, received its first NASA funding in 2010, and here we are in 2025, still grounded. According to NASA's ISS program manager, Dana Weigel, the current bottleneck center on two critical areas, software certification and propulsion system validation. Every single line of code must be tested end-to-end -to, -end to ensure perfect operation in space's harsh environment. But the real killer? Every software function must integrate flawlessly with those 26 engines, the wing control systems, the landing gear, the cargo bay operations, and the ISS docking mechanisms. It's not just testing 26 engines. It's testing 26 engines, working with thousands of other components in perfect harmony. But this is just the beginning. What's really surprising is how Dream Chaser's fundamental design choice, choosing wings over simplicity, created a web of problems that brilliant engineering can't untangle. Dream Chaser's delays aren't happening in isolation. They're occurring while SpaceX has completely revolutionized orbital cargo delivery, making Dream Chaser's approach look increasingly obsolete. This timing reveals something profound about the modern space industry's evolution away from complexity toward proven, scalable solutions. When NASA selected commercial crew providers in 2014, 
They deliberately chose SpaceX and Boeing over Dream Chaser, citing the capsule designs as more mature than Sierra's winged approach. NASA had learned brutal lessons from the space shuttle program about winged spacecraft complexity, safety risks, and operational costs. But here's a detail most people overlook. NASA still awarded Dream Chaser a separate cargo contract precisely because they desperately wanted design diversity in case SpaceX's approach failed. That decision now looks prophetic, but not in the way NASA intended. SpaceX didn't just succeed, they dominated so completely that Dream Chaser's delays became a strategic liability rather than smart diversification. The economic implications paint a stark picture. SpaceX's Falcon 9 launches cost approximately $67 million compared to ULA's Vulcan at over $100 million per flight. That's a $33 million difference every time. Enough money to fund entire small satellite missions or multiple years of research programs. Yet Sierra Space remains contractually locked to ULA for seven NASA cargo missions, creating a fascinating case study in how political relationships and sunk costs can override pure economic logic. And here's what few people realize about the competitive dynamics. This isn't just about one spacecraft anymore. United Launch Alliance faces its own existential crisis that directly impacts Dream Chaser's timeline. ULA is buried under a backlog of 26 national security missions, all waiting for Vulcan certification. They originally projected launching up to 20 missions in 2025, but by August, they'd only managed two Atlas V flights carrying Amazon's Kuiper satellites. This military priority system creates a brutal reality. Commercial projects like Dream Chaser automatically take a back seat, regardless of how long they've been waiting or how much money has been invested. National security launches get first priority, period. But there's something truly noteworthy brewing in the background. Multiple industry experts have suggested SpaceX's Falcon 9 as a backup launcher for Dream Chaser. And the technical analysis reveals both the potential and the problems. Dream Chaser's cargo module was designed specifically for Vulcan's 27,500 kilogram lift capacity, while Falcon 9 maxes out at 22,800 kilograms. Falcon Heavy could easily handle it with 63,800 kilograms capacity, but switching would require complete redesign of the spacecraft's integration systems, structural loads, and vibration profiles. The political considerations run even deeper than pure engineering. ULA, formed by the merger of Boeing and Lockheed Martin Aerospace Divisions, maintains deep government ties that SpaceX, despite its superior performance and reliability, sometimes lacks due to Elon Musk's controversial public statements and social media presence. Sierra Space chose ULA as what industry insiders call the politically secure partner. Even as SpaceX demonstrates superior reliability, faster turnaround times, and dramatically lower costs. We'll come back to this political dimension later because it reveals something crucial about how the space industry really works versus how it should work. Here's why this competitive landscape crisis changes everything. If ULA's delays extend multiple years into the future, Sierra Space faces an impossible choice. They could potentially acquire ULA altogether if the company becomes weak enough, or they could break their contracts and switch to SpaceX as a temporary solution. Either option would fundamentally reshape the launch industry's power structure and possibly kill Dream Chaser entirely. Looking ahead through ULA CEO Tori Bruno's recent projections reveals just how precarious Dream Chaser's position has become. Bruno projects a dramatic acceleration to two launches per month by late 2025, split between Atlas and Vulcan rockets. This would represent a complete transformation from their current pace of just two launches in the entire year. Bruno's confidence stems from upgraded facilities, the vertical integration facility and mobile launch platform that allow parallel rocket preparation instead of sequential processing. But here's what's truly remarkable about these projections. Even if ULA hits this aggressive timeline perfectly, the payload mix still works against Dream Chaser. Bruno expects a 60-40 split between government and commercial missions through 2027. With national security missions taking priority, Dream Chaser realistically faces continued delays until 2026 at the earliest, and that assumes everything else goes perfectly. 
Reading between the lines of Bruno's statements during the teleconference, it's clear he's leaving Dream Chaser's announcement timing up to Sierra Space. Not because he's being diplomatic, but because ULA genuinely doesn't know when Sierra will be ready. The subtext is unmistakable. Dream Chaser won't fly this year, despite some industry speculation about late 2025 possibilities. And here's what most people don't realize about the scheduling reality. With ULA's 60-40 mission ratio prioritizing urgent national security flights, they'll likely squeeze in only three commercial launches maximum in 2025. Two slots have already been filled by Amazon's Project Kuiper satellites, leaving potentially just one commercial slot available. That slot almost certainly won't go to an unproven spacecraft with ongoing certification issues. But there's a potential game-changer brewing that could reshape this entire timeline. According to recent reports from Ars Technica, Sierra Space is actively considering modifying Dream Chaser's first mission from a full ISS docking to a flyby demonstration. Instead of berthing with the station, the spacecraft would approach close enough to test all critical systems, especially that complex 26-engine propulsion suite, without actually connecting to the ISS. Think of this as a high-stakes dress rehearsal that could shave months off the certification timeline. NASA and international partners would get valuable real-world operational data, Sierra would prove the spacecraft can safely operate in the station's neighborhood, and the second flight could proceed to full docking with much higher confidence levels. This strategy shift reveals something deeper about modern aerospace development philosophy. The traditional approach of making everything absolutely perfect before the first flight is giving way to SpaceX's proven philosophy of iterative testing and rapid improvement cycles. If Sierra adopts this flyby approach, it signals a fundamental change in how established aerospace companies think about risk tolerance and validation processes. However, this plan faces a significant hurdle. It would require modifying Sierra's existing contract with NASA, and that decision hasn't been made yet. Contract modifications in government aerospace programs typically take months of negotiation, legal review, and approval processes. The irony is that the bureaucratic process to approve faster testing might take longer than the testing itself. The long-term implications extend far beyond one spacecraft or even one company. Dream Chaser represents the last major alternative to capsule-based cargo delivery systems. If it succeeds after these delays, we maintain crucial design diversity in space transportation, a strategic advantage for American space capabilities. If it fails or faces indefinite delays, we effectively hand SpaceX a monopoly on American orbital logistics for the foreseeable future. What happens next depends on factors largely beyond Sierra Space's control. ULA's ability to resolve Vulcan certification issues with the military, NASA's willingness to modify contracts for faster testing approaches, and the broader political landscape around space industry competition and concentration. But here's the most striking irony in this entire saga. Dream Chaser's 26 engines, designed for unprecedented precision and safety, represent exactly the kind of over-engineering that simpler capsule designs avoided entirely. Those engines aren't just a solution. They're a symptom of choosing complexity over elegance, political relationships over economics, and theoretical capability over practical deployment. The spacecraft that was supposed to prove wings could work in the modern space age now faces the ultimate test, not just of its engineering excellence, but of whether innovation can survive in an industry increasingly dominated by proven, if less sophisticated, solutions. 26 engines can deliver surgical precision, but they can't fix a fundamental strategic miscalculation that prioritized complexity over simplicity from day one. This is exactly why Dream Chaser's 26 engines can't fix the real problem. We're watching complexity lose to simplicity in real time. Brilliant engineering can't overcome strategic miscalculations. Every aerospace company now faces SpaceX's efficiency challenge. Boeing Starliner, Blue Origin, future lunar landers. All asking, can we build it fast enough to stay relevant? By 2026, We'll know if wings can compete with capsules and whether American space transportation stays diverse or becomes a monopoly. This is just the beginning of aerospace's efficiency revolution. How do you think this shakeout reshapes space exploration? Will complexity find its place? 
or does simplicity always win? This is Space Hub. We dive deep into space breakthroughs. For more analysis connecting technical details to industry strategy, you know what to do. Dream Chaser's fate isn't about one spacecraft. It's about the future of innovation itself.